John Calvin on Psalm 119, verses 33 through 46. Heh, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Vav. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation, according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to trust him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually for ever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. Renew my life according to your word. It is as if the prophet is here saying, quote, Lord, as the whole life of mankind is accursed as long as they employ their powers in committing sin, grant that the power which I possess may aspire after nothing except the righteousness which you appoint to us. Unquote. The better to manifest this, we must lay it down as a first principle that seeing, Hearing, walking, and feeling are God's precious gifts, that our understandings and will with which we are furnished are a still more valuable gift. And after all, there is no look of the eyes, no motion of the senses, no thought of the mind, unmingled with vice and depravity. Such being the case, the prophet with good reason surrenders himself entirely to God for the mortification of the flesh, that he may begin to live anew. I will always obey your law. This verse teaches us that if any man yield implicit obedience to God, he will receive this as his reward, that he shall walk with a calm and composed mind, and should he encounter difficulties, he will find the means to overcome them. The faithful, however readily and submissively they give themselves up to God, may happen to find themselves involved in perplexity. Nevertheless, the end contemplated by Paul is accomplished, that though they be in trouble and toil, yet they do not continue in irremediable distress, because it is the duty, so to speak, of God to point out a way for them where there seems to be no way. Second Corinthians 4, verse 8. Moreover, when grievously oppressed, even then they walk at ease, for they commit the doubtful issue of events to God in such a manner that, having him for their guide, they have no doubt they will come out boldly from the depths of distress. I will speak of your statutes before kings and will not be put to shame. These words inform us that we have profited well and truly by God's word when our hearts are so completely fortified against the fear of man that we do not dread the presence of kings even though all the world attempt to fill us with dejection and dismay. It is most unbecoming that God's glory should be obscured by their empty splendor. 